Hi there, I'm Marcus Yam, Technology Evangelist at Intel. Lately, we've noticed that a lot of you have questions about 11th Gen Core H-Series processors. So we decided to take a minute to answer as many questions as we can. With that in mind, welcome to the first ever Intel Technology Community Mailbag. Today, we'll be answering questions about the 11th Gen Core H-Series processor, codenamed Tiger Lake H. On the day we launched this processor in May, we held a Reddit AMA. Special thanks to all the mods and Redditors who've participated and the experts at Intel who helped answer the questions. Let's see what we've got here. Ah, a few of you want to know the same thing. I'll summarize and paraphrase here. Dear Intel, seeing how the Intel 11th Gen Core 8 series processor is capable of five gigahertz across multiple cores, plus 20 lanes of PCIe Gen 4, all in the 10 nanometer architecture, why not just use that silicon for the new desktop chips instead of backporting to 14 nanometer for Rocket Lake? Okay, that's a great question. Trust me, if it were that simple, we absolutely would. But plans for Tiger Lake H and Rocket Lake were years in the making. For those who aren't as familiar with the Intel code names, Rocket Lake refers to the Intel 11th gen core processors for desktops. The decision to launch Rocket Lake on 14 nanometer was made way back in 2019, before we even knew the exact timing on Tiger Lake H which itself was four years in development. Not only that, but we have to consider factors like fab capacity, process technology maturity, and feature sets like IO, frequency, and the number of cores. Even though it might sound easy just to simply drop a new die in a new socket, the reality is much more complex. Long story short, both Rocket Lake and Tiger Lake are the result of balancing the realities of manufacturing and getting these chips out as soon as possible. All right, on to the next one. Okay, will 11th gen Intel Core H series have XE graphics, specifically DG1? Okay, for those who don't know, DG1 is Intel's first discrete graphics silicon in quite some time. In fact, I've got something cool to show you here. It's Intel's previous consumer graphics card that I got back in my days as a hardware reviewer. Super cool, it's called the Intel i740. Since then, Intel's focused its graphics efforts on integrated graphics, which is significant because graphics that are baked into Intel CPUs deliver display technologies in over a billion PCs. That's pretty incredible. And now Intel is ready to get back in the graphics game. DG1, or as you'll see branded on systems as IRS XE Max, is just a sign of things to come for Intel discrete graphics. As far as H-Series goes, it's designed to run in a hybrid graphics mode with both a third-party GPU and Intel integrated graphics with the same architecture features of XE, but with 32 EUs to leave room for more CPU cores. Beyond that, we've designed the platform to PCI Gen 4 spec, so laptop makers can take their pick when it comes to implementing discrete GPUs. Okay, next question. Will there be a Tiger Lake H with DG1 and EMIB in the same package? All right, first of all, I'm so glad people are excited about EMIB. For those who don't know, EMIB stands for Embedded Multi-Die Interconnect Bridge. It's a groundbreaking technology that uses a very small bridge die with multiple routing layers to connect multiple heterogeneous die in a single package cost effectively. It's a really cool technology and yet another way that Intel is innovating above and beyond the industry standard. Now, when it comes to Tiger Lake H, again, the 32 EU integrated graphics is just the ultimate way to use the chip's real estate for amazing performance on up to eight cores. There'll be plenty of discrete GPU options from our OEM partners to take full advantage of the 20 PCIe Gen 4 lanes and resizable bar. So you should expect great performance. And for anyone wondering why you'd want integrated graphics at all when there will be discrete graphics in the laptop, one of the biggest reasons is for power efficiency. A system with Tiger Lake H can run in hybrid mode, so only the discrete GPU comes on when it's needed. And the rest of the time, the system will run most efficiently on the Intel graphics, along with all the feature benefits of the integrated XE media engine, such as hardware accelerated AV1 decode, which is great for saving power when streaming video. All right, I feel like I'm all warmed up. Now for another one. Why is there so much blank unused silicon near the GPU section in the Tiger Lake H die shot? Great question. Promotional photos are usually enhanced and this die shot is no exception. There's actually very little white space on the 11th Gen H series design. That was a quick answer. Let's do another. What can we expect in terms of efficiency, specifically performance per watt and battery life? Okay, the short answer is you can expect a lot. Efficiency and performance were two of the main things Intel engineers focused on this generation. 
and they did everything they could to not sacrifice one for the benefit of the other. Here's a little more detail. 11th gen H series has slightly higher SOC power than 10th gen H series. And since the last generation, we added dynamic energy efficient turbo to automatically toggle between better battery and better performance modes. For example, on Mobile Mark 18, we show less than a half hour more battery life on better battery setting on 10th gen H over 11th gen. But the 11th gen H delivers greater than 10% higher Mobile Mark 18 score on the same power saving setting. That's a pretty huge improvement gen over gen. Even with the possible variations between laptop makers when it comes to exact battery life, systems with Tiger Lake H will be some of the most efficient and long lasting enthusiast mobile platforms out there. All right. Okay. On to the next one. How many SKUs outside of the i9-11980HK will be unlocked for partial overclocking? Okay, like you say, the Core i9-11980HK is fully unlocked, capable of one-click stable overclocking with the help of the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility and the Intel Performance Maximizer. That means you can literally overclock this model with just the click of a mouse, or a trackpad, touchpad, whatever you use. If you're looking for partial overclocking, you'll have even more options. The i9-11950 and the i9-11900H are partially unlocked for up to five bins of overclocking, where the i7-11800H is unlocked for up to four bins. If you're curious about what's a bin, each bin represents a hundred megahertz difference. That's a lot of options, making this one of the most overclockable mobile generations ever. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Okay. This one is deceptively simple. It just says one word that says uh, undervolting with a question mark. I'm gonna go ahead and assume this question is asking if it will be possible to undervolt 11th gen H series processors. If you don't know, undervolting is a process in which you leave the CPU base clock speed the same, but lower the voltage at which your processor runs to save energy and run at a lower temperature. It's kind of like the mirror image of overclocking. Because they're similar, undervolting requires the ability to overclock enabled in the BIOS, which is up to the OEM. So. It could be available on all partially and fully unlocked CPUs depending on the OEM design. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for your next laptop. All right, only a few more left. You've already sent 1 million chips to your laptop partners. Going forward, what do you expect to be the rate of new chips per month? Now we can't share exact numbers outside of financial reporting periods, but I can say that when we asked the experts about Intel about this, the answer I got was, we're building a buttload. So as of a few weeks ago, we've shipped more than 1 million 11th gen H series processors to our partners worldwide. So fear not, anyone who wants a new enthusiast laptop with an H series processor in it this summer should be able to find one pretty easily. Okay, looks like we only have one left. Can you go into more detail about the dual EDP integrated for power optimized companion display? Wow, that's a very specific question. And here's a very specific answer. Previous generations supported a single EDP or embedded display port. As you may remember, Intel pushed and pioneered the companion display. In previous generations, the primary panel was supported through EDP, which allows for better power management and the companion display was driven directly from the discrete GPU. With 11th Gen H series, Intel supports dual embedded displays to provide better power management in systems with companion displays. Remember those really cool dual screen designs that debuted with 10th Gen? Those are just the beginning. Well, that does it for our first ever Intel Technology Community Mailbag. Please keep the questions coming either through this YouTube channel or our Twitter handle at Intel Tech and keep a lookout for the next Reddit AMA on the Intel subreddit. And of course, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Marcus Yam. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.